Today I'm going to be attempting to cycle pretty far to my home park, Flamingo Land. A few days ago, I did something that I never thought I would be able to do. It's between 60 and 70 kilometres there, and I think I'll be able to do that with no problem. Today, I will show you my journey to Flamingo Land and back to see the new Intamin roller coaster set to open soon. But it's the getting back that's the hard part. So if I get, what, halfway and then... I realise that half my energy is gone, we'll have to turn around and we won't be able to get there, so this is going to be very tough. So guys, welcome to a new video, and whilst showing you the footage of my journey, I will explain to you how and what I did. During Covid, we have had restrictions on what exercise we can do. More specifically, we've only been allowed to exercise once a day. For my daily exercise, I mostly went out on bike rides. This started one month ago. I've built myself up, increasing the travel distances each ride, ultimately aiming to cycle to my home park, Flamingo Land and back. Just to note, I have been assessing the risk to myself and others, and I felt that I could safely do this while socially distancing from other people. So on your screens now, you have seen me slowly approaching these hills, and these hills are in fact the North York Moors. And here is me going up the first hill, this is probably one of the steepest off the whole thing, but there were lots of these. After eventually climbing the first hill, I came to a reservoir called Codbeck, and then I continued to climb steadily deeper into the moors. At this part of the ride it felt particularly stormy, there was lots of wind and rain, but that eased off very quickly as I approached some more hills. At first I felt the excitement of a quick downhill section as I banked to the left just like a roller coaster. but what goes down must also go up, at least in cycling. I then found another uphill section here and this was about the fourth hill of the whole ride I think. At the top of this hill I was greeted by a sign telling me to try my brakes. I was wondering why I kept crashing. After a few more hills I finally reached the main road. This road sloped gently downhill which allowed me to pick up some good speed into the town of Helmsley. I sometimes stop here after a day at Flamingo Land to get some fish and chips. You can see a fish and chip shop here on the right but as expected it was closed. At this point I was away from the moors but rapidly approaching Flamingo Land. So we've gone 60 kilometres now and we're almost there and I've just got my first view of the new ride. It's probably not very clear with this camera, I'm just using my phone but you may be able to see it there. This is my first ever time I've seen it for real. Wow. On the left here you can see a sign to Kirby Misbeton which is the village that the entrance of Flamingo Land is in. And now I slope down this short hill and turn left into Flamingo Land. At this point you are seeing my first view of the full coaster and doesn't it look amazing? So after almost 70 kilometers of cycling we are here and wow, this thing looks incredible. Velocity there has also been repainted, that looks very nice, red and grey. But this thing's huge, and some of the inversions along there. I can't wait for this park to open and I can finally ride this thing. It doesn't seem like much work's going on at the moment. Obviously with Covid, that's not surprising. So I didn't really see anything different from what other vloggers have put in their own construction updates, but I think on the drop there may be a trim break, which is very unfortunate, but you know, if that's what the park's got to do to maintain the ride, then it is what it is. I stopped for about half an hour to eat my lunch, and that consisted of two wraps, an apple, and some energy bars. And then I set off to the entire journey again. All the hills, everything. And I wasn't looking forward to it in the slightest. So I think the camera might not have caught that, as it's probably run out of memory. It didn't run out of memory. I forgot to press start. But we've just come up the biggest hill of the lot. There's been about four of these and this is the last one. I'm so relieved. And it's still about 25 kilometers to go, but most of it's downhill from now. So that's so relieving. That seemed to go on forever. So I've just come down off the North York Moors and we're now in the Tees Valley. And it's about 15 kilometers to go until we're home but it's mainly flat now so somehow we've almost done it i didn't take much footage at all of the journey back because the route that we took was more or less the same but i did start to get cramp and some parts of my body were really starting to ache due to this the journey back took a lot longer because i was having to take rests but we got there in the end so nine hours since we've left 
finally back. It's looking quite fresh from wearing that helmet the whole day. So after being out all day in the sun, I've got a little burn on here. You can see the outline of my Rolex. Oh, because of the lighting, you can hardly see the burn, but there it is for real. And even then, it has been fading because it's taken me way too long to edit this video. We were so close to 133 kilometers, but I hope you've enjoyed following my journey along the way. Um, what, why have you gone dim? Thank you so much for watching, guys.